Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost, and today is part two of our attendance series. If you haven't watched part one yet, what are you doing here? Go watch part one. Go on, go do it, and then come on back. All right, so yesterday we built our little attendance form here, and it's got our list of students and the date and whether they're present or not. All right, I'm going to slide this over here, save it there. Now, what I want to do next is instead of setting this default date in the table, I want to grab the default date from that guy right there. Okay, so you can change this, and then when you add new records, it'll just use whatever date's there. And this will default to whatever today's date is. So when you open this guy up, it'll add whatever today's date is in there. All right, that's getting a value from a field, which is one of the prerequisites from before. So... Design the main menu. Let's go in here. I'm going to change this to say attendance date. Okay. Now this is currently called current date. I'm going to change this to attendance. Oops. How did my, my mouse has been doing something really weird. It just randomly clicks wherever I leave the pointer sitting and it'll just be here. So I got oh, I've gone through several mice and it's not the mouse. I think it's my system. Anyways, the name attendance date is going to be the name of the field. Now, we can't have equals date in the control source because the control source says this will always be your value. Okay? And if it's bound to a table, it gets the field that's in the table. And if it's a function like that, it always will have that value. So, I don't want to put anything in there. It's going to be an unbound text box, but I still want it to start off with today's date. So, go to data and default value we're going to put equals date just like that. This way it starts off as today's date, but you can change it if you want to. You're going to do like two or three days in a row of attendance, right? Okay, so now save this and close it, and let's see what we got there. Okay, that's good. That is today's date. Let's go to the attendance table now and get this out of here. All right, get that date out of there. Why did I have you put it there in the first place? Well, just because we were doing the tables first, and I don't want to have to type it in every time. And now... We're going to put it in the attendance form down here, All right? Design view. This guy is going to have its default value set to equals forms main menu F attendance date. There it is right there. Okay. And I'll zoom in so you can see that. And, and since I'm a good little boy and I don't put spaces in my field names or my form names or my object names or any of that stuff, I don't really need these square brackets, but Access puts them on there for me because it's trying to be nice. Because if you weren't a good little boy and you had like that, and I see this all the time, and that's okay. I, if you don't know any better, if you didn't take my beginner lessons, then you, you probably have these in your database. It makes it so much easier if you don't have spaces in your field names. Trust me. I can always tell when someone joins as a member and then they post a question in the forums and they've got spaces everywhere and weird characters everywhere. And I'm like, yeah, you didn't learn from me. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll help you fix it. But this is why you're having a problem. All right. So save it. Close it. Close it. Now we need to change this button so that it opens up the attendance form. Okay. I'm sick of doing that and having to come down here and do it. Instead of hello world, this will be our attendance button. Now I promised this was going to be an expert level class. And I'm going to show you how to do it without any coding. All right. But then I'm going to show you real quickly how easy it would be if you know one line of code. So we're going to delete this button. You wouldn't have to delete it if we were using VBA, but we're going to delete it anyways. Form design, grab a button, drop the button here. Form operations, open a form. Attendance F. Uh, uh, show all the records. Sorry, I, I blanked there. I was looking for the next step, which is this one. Text and then attendance form. Next, give a good name. Uh, attendance button and then finish all right see how many steps that was and it works right it works there you go okay watch how fast this would be if we didn't use the wizard if you know a little bit of eba you ready form design grab a button drop it here cancel the wizard change the caption attendance form all right give the button a name if you want to, you don't have to. If you don't, Alex will yell at you. <laughs> if you don't know who Alex is, go to my website. 
um, attendance button or whatever you want to call it. And then watch this right click build event brings up the code builder. And a lot of this stuff normally isn't on. Let me turn off all the optional stuff. All right. There you go. Normally it's this simple. Ready? You're in the sub here. You go in here, you go do command, open form, attendance, F. That's it. It's all you need to know. That's that whole lot simpler than running that wizard. I just like to show you because I want you to not be scared of VBA. It's super easy to use. If you want to get your feet wet with VBA, go watch this. It'll get you started. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know. Okay? Okay. Because we will be doing a little bit of VBA for the advanced students a little bit later on. Okay? All right. All right. So close this. Open it back up again. All right. Now, when it's time to do tomorrow, let's say 531, you put the date in there first. Okay. Hit attendance form. And now notice that your default value for the next record down there is going to be for whatever dates over there. So if you want to do these by hand, it now it makes it easier. Put Jim Kirk in there. Put Mr. Spock in there. All right, he's in class. You put Reginald Barkley in there. He's in class and so on. Okay, but I don't want to have to insert these by myself by hand. I mean, you can if you want to. If you have like a special study group or something and you want to just note who was at it. But... I want to make a button that I can click that just adds them automatically. And whenever I hear adding records to a table, adding means, oh, that's append. So I'm going to create an append query to add those records for me. So close that form. Let's create an append query. Now, if you didn't watch the prerequisite append query video that I mentioned at the beginning of this series, go watch it now. All right, create query design. We're going to add in as our source of data. Where are we getting our data from? That's our student query. You can find it over here. Or I almost, I don't like this little pane over here. I almost always use this guy. Student queue, drop it right there. That's where we're getting our data from. Okay. Now, what do I need to insert into the attendance table? Well, I need to insert the customer ID. Don't need that. Don't need that. So I just need to insert customer ID. Let's change this to an append query. So query design, pick append query over here from query types. Okay, where are we appending this data to? That's gonna go into the attendance table. Hit okay. Now, notice down here, append to customer ID was set automatically because the field names are the same. All right, now let's save this real quick. I'm gonna save this as my uh, attendance append queue because we're gonna make a different attendance query later too all right let's just see what happens if we run this guy now you can either close it and reopen it or i put a run button for my queries up here on my quick access toolbar i'm gonna run this all right now i have warnings turned off and i believe i teach you how to do that in the append query video normally you'd see like you're about to append six records are you sure i turn all that off i don't like that but let's take a look now what's in our attendance table oh look at that there's six new records in there with all of my student IDs. That's pretty cool. I'm missing the class date times though. Why? Because, well, we didn't tell it what to, do, what to put in that field. All right, so let's go back over here. Delete these records that we just inserted. Now we got to insert a date and time in here. How do we do that? Well, the date and time is going to be this date and time right there. Okay, that's one of the reasons why I want to put that on the form so we can grab it. How do we get it into the destination table will watch this. There's no field for it up here, but append to the next column over here, drop that down. Oh, look at that. We can specify any of these fields that we want to. Well, we don't need to specify that. It's an auto number. We already got that. There's our class date time. What do I want to put in class date time? I'm going to put that value, right? What is it going to be equal to? Forms, main menu, F, attendance. Attendance date. You don't get IntelliSense for this, unfortunately. Now, when you hit tab, it's going to throw expression one in front of it. That's okay. You can leave that if you want to. This really doesn't matter. That's just what's called an alias. You can call it a date or whatever you want to call it, right? AD, I don't care. Give it any name you want. It doesn't really matter. That's what you normally see in a select query when you see the column headers across the top. For an app end query, it really doesn't matter. Okay, it's just going to say something. Leave it that. Now, let's run it again. 
Okay, now let's take a look at our attendance table. Oh, look at that. There's our dates. And you can set present if you want to, to be all on or whatever, however you want to handle that. That's up to you. Okay, now, again, let's delete these because I don't want to have to run that manually by opening up the query, right? I want to have a button that does it for me. Now, you can put a button out here to run that query without using VBA if you want to. I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, grab the button, drop it there, go to miscellaneous, and then run query next. Which one? The attendance append next. Put text in here, right? Add students for date. Next, give it a button name, right? Add student button and finish. All right, there's your button, add students for date. I, I got a weird thing where my buttons have to be all the same width. Okay, and height too. I'm, I don't like the buttons not being the same height. So there we go. All right, looks good. So now save it, close it, open it. Let's put in here the third, what, what do we not have? Let's see. Okay, we need the 31st in here. So let's put in here the 31st. Hit the button that runs the query. Again, nothing happens. Nothing appears to happen, but when you open this up now, there's all your 31st. See, that ran the query. Now you have a fully functioning and working attendance system right here as it is. Now next up in part three on Monday, we are going to build an attendance report. All right, that's gonna look like this. And we're gonna have each student in here right? Whether they're present or not. And we're going to count up their absences and presences and stuff. Okay. And then after that, we're going to come back to this form and we're going to put an add students button right here. This is going to involve a tiny bit of VBA, but it's going to be super cool. All right. Cause let's say you're doing the 31st, right? Show attendance. You can hey, add students right here. Boom. There they go. That involves a little bit like two lines of code. Also, I'll show you that after we do the report, okay? And then we got an extended cut coming with some more extra cool stuff in it too. For example, what happens if you try to do that again? Oh, you already have students on this date. You wanna add them again? No, not really. And we're gonna do it so when you open up the database, it's gonna say, oh, you forgot to take attendance on the 26th. Go back and look a week or two and say, oh. So we're gonna add all these kind of cool things in. Um, a lot of it's gonna be in the regular versions, a little bit in the extended cut. So we got lots more coming up. Um, we'll continue with part three on Monday, June 2nd. Yeah, <laughs> June 2nd, 2025. And if you're watching this way in the future, don't worry about it. It's going to be online anyway. So you're just good. So today is Friday when this video is releasing. So tune in on Monday. Ignore that. Tune in on Monday. Same bad time, same bad channel. You know the drill. Members, you can watch it soon. I don't have it recorded yet, but I might record. Probably going to record it over the weekend or tonight. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how strong the coffee is within me. But that's going to do it, folks. That is your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. We might have a quick queries tomorrow, Saturday. If not, I'll see you on Monday for part three. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. 
Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.